So what server should you be going for? Should you go for a big rack server? Should you go for a tower server? Should you just go for a desktop or a laptop or even these little mini PCs? There's so many options available. My name is Emilio. I release tech videos on all things tech. And hey, if you like my channel, I would love it if you click on the subscription button, click on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of our video releases. You love tech, you wanna learn more about tech, go check out some of my training courses. Links down below in the this video description. Now look, let's just have a little bit of a discussion. Now before I even tell you what sort of server you should be going for, you've got to have a think about, well, what is the whole point? What am I trying to do here? What am I actually trying to do? What am I trying to build? Why do I need a server in the first place? Have a sit down and plan ahead what you're actually intending to build. Think of the next one year, the next two years. Are you wanting to keep this thing long-term or only short term? Is it just for playing around with stuff? Tinkering, dev stuff? Once you've got yourself an idea about that, then we can move on to the next important part, which is about your budget. How much cash, moolah, are you willing to spend on this thing? A rack server is gonna cost you a lot more than a smaller type of server. Then, how much space do you have? Not just space, but what about the noise? A rack server, they're big, they're chunky, they're noisy, they're hot. If you're running this at home, hey, you've got electricity bills to pay. You or somebody that you live with has to pay, fork out the cash to pay for the bills. You got something that is big, something that is noisy, something that runs hot, it's gonna cost you a little bit more. But also because it's a bigger unit, you've got to figure out where are you going to put this thing. Like a rack server goes inside of a rack, generally. Doesn't have to, you can go on a floor, on a desk, in a cupboard, while a smaller tower-based server, hey, you can sort of put that anywhere without too much problem. And then even these little mini cute little things, I mean, you could stick that in your pocket. Probably not, but now have a think about, well look, am I gonna be building one server? Do you wanna play around with building a whole bunch of VMs? How many VMs do you wanna be able to build? Do you wanna build 10 VMs? Well, if you need to build 10 virtual servers, well then you need a lot of RAM, you need a lot of CPU, you need some significant amount of hard drive space. Smaller one may not be able to give you that. So let's focus a little bit first on the desktop type of servers and then we'll move on to the rack based servers. Laptops, yeah, I mean look, they're not really servers but you could potentially convert a laptop to act as a server. It doesn't have server grade parts inside of it but you could actually remove the Windows, remove the Mac on those computers and install server software. Install Windows Server, in install Linux, Ubuntu, Red Hat, whatever it is, and actually convert it into a server. Then we move into the desktops. Now, of course, the desktop type of computers, well, you've got mini PCs. There's a whole range of mini PCs inside of them. You're gonna have all the standard bits, a little mini micro motherboard, a CPU, some RAM, and a hard drive, or you may need to plug in hard drives on the outside of it. But because it's mini, it's gonna give you mini amounts of power and mini amounts of performance. So a lot of these, which is really cool, you can actually install Windows Server onto them. Don't know if I would, but you can also install VMware ESXi and it actually would work okay. You can also, if you wanna get the best bang for your buck and get the most performance out of it, install something like Linux. Installing a version of CentOS or Ubuntu or Fedora, Kali Linux, if you wanna learn a little bit about cybersecurity stuff, that would be a good option for these. Some of them are fanless as well, so they're like super quiet. They're cheaper, totally cheaper, but you're not gonna get the performance out of it. And then you move into the desktops, home user desktops, desktops that you find in businesses, okay? And desktops come in like a desktop form factor and they come in a tower form factor, one of the two. But then in the server range, where now we're talking about a little bit more server grade stuff, you can actually go and buy tower based servers. Some of them, they look similar to a normal old school sort of a desktop tower computer. And what makes them server grade? Well, the bits inside of it, you're gonna get better resources, a lot more RAM that you can stick on it. Some of them will have dual CPUs. They will come with a whole bunch of hard drives with a RAID card. So you can actually get all your disks and build RAIDs. And some of these will also come with dual power supplies, good redundancy and failover because you can set up your disks in a RAID you lose a disk, you're okay as long as they're set up in a specific RAID configuration. And these are what make them more server grade. So you'll pay more for a tower-based server than you will for a non 
server-based tower desktop computer. But then something like this is going to be running hotter. It's going to be also a little bit noisier, okay? And then we move into the servers that are now going to be generally sitting inside of a rack of some type. There are two different types of servers that are for racks, we'll say. There's blade servers, and you can stick multiple blade servers inside of a, like an enclosure. But then you've got the big rack servers, which is like the one that I've got over here. My one is a HP Pro Lion, and this thing, yeah, it's good, it's good. It's got a lot of RAM. Some of these you can stick terabytes of RAM. Dual CPUs, a lot of disks, on the front, some of them come with disks built in inside of them as well, of course with dual powers. And of course I've got all these other functionalities built into it out of the box sometimes. A lot of NICs, four, eight, network points for lots of redundancy, lots of failover. You may have fiber channel cards. And of course, all the disks in here can all be set up in a RAID. So there's a RAID controller inside of the unit. They're a lot more powerful. They're a lot more noisy. They're a lot hotter to run. Now in my environment, I've got all three. I love all three of them. They all have their own purposes. So what I generally do in my own space is if I'm just playing around with my everyday stuff, my everyday little computer just to do basic things, I will go with the smaller ones. I will go for the mini PCs and the desktop based PCs. I think that is fine. When I want to learn, when I want to get my hands dirty on some of the bigger tech, when I need to do some grunt, I need some processing, some video processing. I maybe want to run like a game server because I'm hosting a big old LAN party. And maybe I want to run all of my VMs at once. That's when I fire up my servers. You're going to be able to allocate a lot more resources from a CPU perspective, a lot more cores from the bigger ones than you will from the smaller ones. Because I know I'm going to be getting a lot better performance out of them, but I don't keep these on all the time because of you know what I said before, the noise and the heat stuff, it's like, it's, they're pretty noisy. So my final conclusion here is if you don't care about the noise, if you're fine with the noise, if you don't care about the high electricity and you're fine to just maybe leave it running all the time and you wanna build a lot of stuff, go for a rack server. If you do care about that stuff and you're willing to sacrifice some of the performance, then maybe go for something smaller. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought. What have you got? What are you thinking about getting yourself? And we will see you on the next video.